bit five minutes or so that i heard from what he said i just said this man i hope that they understand it let me recap on one thing he said he said praise now brings this lifting this open doors and praise multiplies it too very powerful revelation and truly he's a man who knows what he's saying god has honored him with the results that represent his knowledge and sacrifice we honor you sir god bless you <laughs> hallelujah let's lift our hands to heaven and ask the lord to speak to us again the entrance of his word gives light and understanding unto the simple lord we thank you we thank you for the abundance of your word and your wisdom in our midst in the name of jesus we pray please be seated god bless you let me celebrate every one of us for the endurance to receive teaching after teaching everybody who has been scheduled by god through his servant to minister here has come with a dimension of truth and wisdom and has communicated it effectively and just like we're discussing yesterday with pastor shola i believe that god is doing something very very prophetic and i believe that everyone who has come here is being prepared by the word of god and by the spirit of god to become an effective tool i believe that someday someone who is seated in the congregation now is the one who will be standing here and be teaching us aspects of kingdom truth this is what it's all about hallelujah praise the name of the lord when it was time for them to eat bread he said put them in batches and let them sit down so that they can eat so god will grant us grace as we explore for a few minutes this afternoon i have two sessions one this afternoon and then one in the evening and um, let's trust god for grace in jesus name matthew chapter 16 from where we got the theme for the conference matthew 16 i'll begin my reading from verse 13 matthew 16 i'm reading from verse 13 to 16 blessed be the name of the lord is it projected or do i turn my bible matthew 16 from verse 13 when jesus came into the coast of caesarea philippi the bible says he asked the disciples so the entire discussion that would lead to the concept of the church began with a question hallelujah he asked the disciples saying whom do men say that i the son of man am follow the answers now 14 some said you are elijah verse 14 and they said some said thou art john the baptist some elias that's elijah and others jeremiah or one of the prophets and then he now said unto them verse 15 but whom say ye that i am 16 simon peter answered and said thou art the christ listen to his answer thou art the christ the son of the living god let me even extend it uh it says then jesus answered and said unto him blessed art thou simon son of jonah for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you but my father which is in heaven and i say unto thee thou art peter and upon this rock i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against thee. someone shout a loud amen, amen. hallelujah now in studying scripture it is important for you to allow scripture to interpret itself hallelujah first you know by now that this kingdom excelling in this kingdom is knowledge dependent hallelujah that means even though the life that we have been given in christ the zoe life is a compendium of infinite possibilities it depends on the level of light spiritual illumination that you have hallelujah 
For if you remain in darkness, the Bible says, an heir for as long as he's a child, that he differeth not from a slave. Hallelujah. So this is a kingdom that is knowledge dependent. And um, from a theological standpoint, so that I begin to build on my discussion, there are many aspects of theology. And uh, I don't want to bore you, but it's important that we have this background. Theology itself comes from the word theos. That means the study of God in his triune nature. Are we together? And there are many aspects that completely build the holistic picture of the believer's understanding of God. Theology itself is the study of God. Then we have anthropology from the word anthropos, the study of man. Hallelujah now. Man, not just as a biological species, to now understand man. Because the moment you study God, the next entity to study is man. Hallelujah. And then we have what we call soteriology. Soteriology is the study of the entire expanse of the salvation story. It is important that you understand soteriology. And then you have what we call Christology. Christology is the study of the man, Jesus Christ. You study his pre-incarnate nature, his incarnate nature. Are we together? His earth work alongside his, the whole activity up until his resurrection, his ascension and his enthronement. Then we have what we call ecclesiology. The church came out as a result of that which Christ has done. So, there are three aspects of theology that you would need to study holistically to understand these kinds of statements. Number one is Christology. You have to study Jesus himself. Number two, Sertoriology, the study of salvation. And then Ecclesiology, you have to study the church. Hallelujah. So, this discourse started with a question. Jesus said, Who do men say that I the son of man am? And they started saying, You are one of the prophets and so on and so forth. And then he said, Okay, who do you say that I am? And all of them kept quiet, except Peter. And Peter said, I know who thou art. Thou art Christ, he says, the son of the living God. So let's examine a few things. Number one, the entire discussion started with an issue of perception and revelation. Hallelujah. The entire discussion started with an issue of their perception and their revelation. Jesus was probing into their perception and their revelation. Who do men say? What do they see me as? What is their idea of me based on my background? Based on the antecedents around my life, based on the miracles they've seen, what is their perception and what is their revelation of me? This is the first thing that we, we capture in this scripture. The second thing that we capture in this scripture is that Peter spoke by revelation. The Bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that Peter was not speaking sensually. Peter's response was not an issue of intelligence. Peter's response was not an issue of experience. Peter's response was an issue of revelation. He says, I know who thou art. Then, the third thing we find out in this scripture is Peter's answer. Don't forget what we are discussing. Number one was an issue of perception and revelation. Number two... That the answer that Peter got was outsourced from a realm higher than this dimension. His answer did not come using brain work. He says, I know who thou art. Are we together? And now the answer is what is very important. He says, thou art the Christ. Thou art the Christ. Comma, son of the living God. This is Peter's answer. So Peter is attempting that question. Who do men say that I am? Who do you say that I am? And he says, I know who you are. It has been given to me by revelation. Thou art Christ, the son of the living God. 
The third thing we observed from this scripture was the response of Jesus. Notice, in response to that answer, Jesus first blessed him. He says, you are blessed. In other words, you have truly been empowered. I see the evidence of an external empowerment upon you. He says, you are blessed because you have received this revelation from my Father who is in heaven. That means it is impossible for you, even though you are human, this kind of result does not come from humans. I, the, the, your speaking reveals to me that you have aligned yourself with the Father and that your communication is not of yourself. Are we together? And then he says, he blesses him for receiving it, for rising above and beyond the realm of flesh and blood. Because he said, flesh and blood has not revealed this. That means to understand Jesus as the Christ, you must rise beyond the realm of flesh and blood. Are we together? And then, Jesus now makes a very profound statement. That's the next thing we observe from that scripture. Very profound statement. Please give it to us. Um, Matthew 16 now, and um, verse 18. And I say unto thee, this has been a theological debate for many, many years and decades. But please pay attention. I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Please keep this scripture. Let's examine for a minute or two the implication of Jesus' statement here. There has been... An age-long confusion as to what Jesus meant by the rock. Other people would say it is Peter because it comes from the name Petros or Peta, which means a rock. Hallelujah. And other people have said the rock means Jesus himself. He said, thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church. Let's observe a few things from that statement. Number one is that Jesus makes an unmistaking exclusive ownership of the church he calls it my church this is a revelation that every believer must understand he didn't say our church i will build my church i will build my church the second thing i want you to observe from that statement is he said he will build only one church he never said, I will build churches. I will build my church. Pay attention to what Jesus is saying now. I will build my church. So the implication of Jesus' statement is, number one, whatever you see me build is my own. That means don't even make an attempt to claim ownership. It is my church. Are we together? And then number two, he's saying it is a church. He's not building churches. That means in God's mind and in God's idea, there are no churches. There is one Catholic church or no church. You are part of that church or you are not. It's as simple as that. Are we together? The next statement from Jesus that we need to learn is that the church will be built. It will not appear. I will build. Very, very definite statement. I will build. Jesus himself, he didn't say the church will manifest. He didn't say the church will appear. He says, I will build. What does it mean to build? To build means to form, to construct, and to make a structure by bringing together many parts arranged in an orderly way. That's what it means to build. For you to build a thing, you must outsource the materials from various areas and various elements to build. So, you need to understand what is in the mind of Jesus when he talks about building the church. I will build my church. I will outsource the material from several men and several people to make up that entity called the church. To build also means to give form or shape by combining many parts or materials to become a composite structure. That's what it means to build. It's like a tailor making your cloth. 
he had to get the button is that true he had to get the thread he had to get a lot of things there are times you will even outsource maybe gemstones you know and other things and at the end of it you wear them together you don't wear them independently you don't carry a stone moving around you don't carry you know you don't carry the pocket of your trouser and move around and say i have a cloth until it is stitched together the beauty of it therefore is not in its individual excellence the beauty is in its ability to come into alignment to form that composite structure are we understanding what jesus is teaching now i will build my church and he said it will be so formidable the gates of hell shall not prevail against it now very straight to the point what is this rock please go back to okay verse 18 now what is this rock that jesus christ was talking about because it matters now that we are secured about the building because he's the one building it so we have no fear no matter what the devil does we trust the formidability of the church not because of the materials but because of the excellence of the builder when god builds it stands he builds the earth kings have come and gone the earth is still standing so the earth is a testament that he's an exceptional builder he made the heavens and the earth and the clouds have never needed pillars for millions of years as heavy as the clouds are the cloud can shift a plane that is full of luggages and yet not need pillar to be supported so when god says he's building you better understand the person who is talking he has a track record of building hallelujah but the question now is the rock upon which it will be built because it is important the emphasis here is what it is built upon he says upon this rock i will build my church that means as powerful as the building is if you do not understand what that rock is it can affect the structure even though the builder did a good job and you see in interpreting scripture there is no point making assumption the spirit of revelation functions by comparing scripture to scripture you do not just assume that jesus was talking about himself or was talking about peter so let the bible speak for itself are we together what is that rock matthew chapter 7 please give us from verse 21 the same jesus is teaching matthew 7 from verse 21 here's what he says not everyone that saith to me lord lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven but she that doeth the will of my father in heaven we're reading to 29 verse verse 22 now it says many will say in that day lord lord notice the name that he's called have we not prophesied in your name and in your name we have cast out devils in your name we have done many wonderful works his reply i will profess unto them i never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity now 24 therefore listen carefully now jesus is teaching he's talking about building whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them i will liken him upon a wise man which built his house on jesus himself is talking to us now about building and about the rock and he said when it has to do with building please back to 14 or what was the verse where or 24 the, the the verse before let me just make a point and then we'll go to 24 yes whosoever heareth these sayings notice there is no mention of building materials there and yet he's talking of a building are we together that the resources that is equivalent to this building is your hearing and your doing please pay attention now whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them i will liken unto a wise man so what makes a man wise your hearing and your doing he says which built his house upon a rock now 25 the rain descended the floods came 
the winds blew and beat upon the house what happened to the house it fell not what was the secret it was not the power of the superstructure it was the rock that it was built upon so this rock issue is a serious issue that no matter how powerful the building is if the foundation is not that rock these elements the rain the floods the wind rain is not the same as flood the rains the floods the wind three of them came and beat upon that building but the longevity factor was the rock now 26 and then he now says everyone that sheared these sayings of mine my goodness please look up this is a very serious statement it then means when it has to do with building god designed a technology that should force everybody to hear the sayings because even this foolish man had it too he says everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not so his foolishness is not in his absolute inability to hear he insisted that both the wise and the foolish will all hear but he says and doeth them not he shall be likened to a foolish man which built his house upon sand the bible didn't say he built a bad house he built well but it was upon sand the next verse please the rain came again are you seeing that there are things that happen to you regardless whether you are wise or foolish to both the wise and the foolish the rains the floods and the wind happen to them all so when you see someone's structure standing it is not because the rain did not come it is not because the wind did not come it was that they took the time to build upon the rock praying that rain does not come flood does not come wind does not come the bible already tells you that with respect to that building is a foolish prayer because these are realities that happen to men according to the law of time and chance are we together now but that the advantage that that believer has is that one built on a rock one built on sand please pay attention and let god give us this revelation as we pray there are two references in the bible as far as this discussion about the rock is concerned for starters the bible already tells us that the one building on that rock is jesus so the rock is not just jesus alone because jesus is the one who is building on that rock are we together now let me run through a few things here building on the rock according to scripture is equivalent to hearing and doing building on a rock according to jesus's own teaching he likens it to hearing and doing this is the structure upon which the church was built in one word the church is built on revelation please listen carefully revelation i will build my church upon this revelation what revelation the church was and is built upon the revelation of number one the builder the first revelation that the church is built upon is the revelation of the builder himself more than the rock because don't forget rock issue came later on the first issue jesus asked about was himself so if your study is just about the rock you are missing something already the first revelation that the church is built upon is the knowledge of the builder himself and the bible calls him by the testimony of peter the christ if we are together say amen. amen the church was built upon the revelation of the builder who is jesus secondly the church was built upon the revelation and the principle listen carefully of hearing and obeying he said this is the structure upon which i will build my church that means the building depends 
on its ability to have revelation through hearing and the ability to obtain faith to walk. This is the structure upon which the church was built. You compromise on this structure, the church cannot stand. Are we together? The principle of revelation through hearing. And then, the, the word hearing there does not just mean ear alone. It's a biblical expression to mean perception. Are we together now? Yes. Jesus' statement, immediately, I wrote here, reveals how the gate of hell operates. Based on the statement of Jesus, we can deduce how the gates of hell operate. Ignorance and disobedience. That means the character of the gates of hell is that they bring an individual, the strength of hell and darkness is ignorance and then the inability to comply. Because what made the second man foolish was not his inability to hear. He did not obey. Is someone learning please? It's important to get this foundation. You need to know how the church was built. Jesus reveals how the gates of hell, how it operates through ignorance and through disobedience. Let me make reference to the second, um, the second portion of scripture that gives us an understanding as to what Jesus was saying. And then we now establish a few things and pray in the name of Jesus Christ. The second reference is Peter's sermon on the day of Pentecost. Please go, turn with me to the, uh, the book of Acts chapter 2. Because if Jesus commended Peter about his understanding of Jesus and used him in reference to the building of the church, it is only wise that we probe into what Peter said after the Pentecost because it was him that preached that sermon. And I want us to examine for a few minutes what Peter said. Is someone ready? For sake of time, we'll jump scriptures. Please give us verse 14. Then we'll jump to 21 to 24. Then 32 and 36. Pay attention now. Acts chapter 2 and verse 14. It says, but Peter standing up. Now they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And people came and said, these men are drunk with new wine. And Peter is speaking in defense of that experience now. Peter standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said ye men of judea and all of you that dwell at jerusalem let it be known to you and hearken unto my words uh-huh verse um let's go to verse 21 now for the sake of time jump to 21 he began to speak to them this is that that which Joel said he now made reference to the Psalms by the time we get to 21 he said it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved reading to 24 ye men of Israel hear these words Jesus of Nazareth a man approved of God among you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves you know. Reading to 24. It says, Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. 24. Whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that death should hold him. John, please, to verse 32, and then we'll end with 36. Verse 32, I'm jumping because of time. It says, This Jesus, not a different one, this same Jesus had God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Now, verse 36. 36 for time. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made the same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Jesus is discussing about the church and he's saying upon this rock, who do men say that I am? And Peter says, I know who you are. I am the Christ. And then he says, 
you are correct in knowing that I am the Christ as revealed to you by my Father in heaven. He passed that test. He now goes to the next subject, even though connected to what he was saying. He said, upon this revelation, what revelation? That for the church to be properly built, there are two elements of the glory of the church that must be captured in that building. Number one, the revelation of Jesus as the Christ. Number two, the principle of revelation and obedience. Is someone learning now? So you must know the builder, Jesus the Christ. Let's discuss that word, the Christ, for one moment, please. Because many people will tell you that they know Jesus. Not everything about Jesus translates to salvation. If you know Jesus as the son of Mary, it has no effect in the realm of the spirit. If you know Jesus as one of those, those prophets, it is just a theological advantage. But as far as the release of power and dominion is concerned, principalities and powers have never been subject. They have never trembled at the fact that Jesus was a prophet. Not everything about the revelation of Jesus threatens the gates of hell. But there, there is a dimension that must be captured in the believer's understanding. Is someone learning now? Jesus the Christ. The word Christ comes from the Greek word Christos. And Christos means the anointed one. This is where most people know. It does not only mean the anointed man, the anointed one. It also means the chosen one. And that's where I want to dwell. Because every time we talk about Jesus the Christ, the only thing we think about is the anointing and signs and wonders. And as that is wonderful, the knowledge that you need is not just Jesus being anointed. Is that Jesus was that one who was prophesied about of the Father, the chosen one. Is from the same Hebrew word that is translated Messiah. The chosen one, not just the anointed one. So this rock talks of the revelation of Jesus as the one chosen and then anointed by God to purchase redemption and to reconcile us to God. Please look at me. The foundation of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ must be on Jesus as Messiah, the chosen one. And then the anointed one, anointed of the Father to purchase redemption and to bring reconciliation. It is amazing that there are many churches today, respectfully speaking. And you will be surprised that the reason why the winds, the rains and the flood seems to wipe away the program of God is because something is wrong with the foundation upon which the church is built. In many cases, Jesus is out of the story. Out of the story. His name is mentioned. But the revelation of Jesus as the chosen one, the Messiah and the anointed one, has not been crystallized in the heart of the average believer. This explains the foundation for our powerlessness, even as believers. Thou art Christ, the Son of the living one. When Peter, listen, when Peter and John went to pray at the hour of prayer, they saw a man at gate beautiful. Are we together now? He understood that revelation and he said, Silver and gold I do not have, but such as I have I give unto you. In the name, I have a revelation. It is a, it's a commodity in the spirit. I can use it to purchase healing. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the man sat down there. The Bible says Peter held him. He was confident. Very confident. This should work. And he held him up. And the Bible says the man leaping, he stood. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ, sadly, has not experienced authority and power in the spirit. Because foundationally, most believers have not had an encounter with Jesus Christ. We have had an encounter with apostles and prophets and there is a place for that we have had encounters with denominations and christian sects we have had encounters with conferences and men of god we have had encounters with spiritual items 
like communion, like oil, like water, like handkerchiefs. And within the boundary of scripture, there's a place for them. But none of those things represent the rock. No man of God represents the rock. No. No oil or water represents the rock. No church building represents the rock. So something is wrong with the structure. And the proof that your structure was built or not, you can't assume because of the aesthetics of the structure, whether spiritually or physically. We will have to wait patiently until the rain comes. We will have to wait patiently until the flood comes. We will have to wait patiently. No wonder for the average believer in Nigeria and across Africa one disappointment and they say I'm tired of this thing you see it tells the kind of substance and the nature of their building the apostles were people of power they were people of grace even by God listen to the extent that some of them were persecuted and they died with joy as for going back they said no our foundation is strong persecutions arose and many of them stood. When you study the history of the church in Nigeria. And I have the privilege of coming from the north. You see. There are many dimensions of persecution. That many of our fathers past and present went through. Endured to emerge to what they are now. It did not affect their convictions. Because the foundation of their Christian experience was not church not titles not membership not money not rema not anointing they started their journey correctly with the revelation of jesus the disciples who walked with jesus when it had to do with his passion do you know even peter who jesus commended jesus had to pray for him because all of them ran away your knowledge of jesus is what defines your stability in the faith experience the revelation of jesus christ that you have many believers shout like peter lord i will stand for you and let something just happen with their job let something happen with their marriage let something happen with their children and the kind of christianity we advocate right now shows that the moment there is anything wrong usually people oh god you have failed me if you are faithful why do i not have a child after five years i will go and outsource power from somewhere else who do men say that I am? It says, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. I hope you know, not to condemn, but there are many people today being ordained, many people being made prayer coordinators, choir coordinators, that have not encountered Jesus. They only have experience of longevity within a church setting. And it is dangerous for the body of Christ. Because now you have people who have not had an encounter with Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ. They have not obtained his life in experience. But simply because they understand the technicalities of ministry. They have been promoted, ordained, sometimes even assigned branches, respectfully speaking. And then the storms come. Then the rain comes. And all kinds of things happen. And you find believers denying Jesus for a simple political position. Many people will turn Jesus down and say, listen, let's leave this Jesus issue. We'll ask for forgiveness later on. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. When we started out with God, the desire was never to become men of God. The desire was not to be anointed. The desire was not to be conference speakers. It matters what motivates the entire scope of your spiritual pursuit. And I'm saying this respectfully speaking, even to the younger generation coming because we need to redefine our motivations. 
There are people who have failed in life or your family members just say, I believe in you. Go and manifest the kingdom. And people just do a lot of spiritual things and all that is at the back of their mind is let me become popular or let me become famous by fire, by force. The most important thing is for my territory to acknowledge that I am there. That may be well-meaning, but it's a dangerous formation already. Once it is not built on the revelation of Christ as the builder. Do you know Jesus? Have you met Jesus? Some have met power. Some have met prophecy. Some have met gifts. Some have met ordinations. But they have not met Jesus. It's been my emphasis for many people. And we need to restore this. You will be surprised how that our children. You will be surprised how that our businessmen. They know Jesus as the founder of a religion. They know Jesus as the leader of those who will make heaven one day. They know Jesus as one who is loving and compassionate. And then they stop there. The disciples were not in ignorance. As to the personality of Jesus. And he still asked them that question. Who do men say that I the son of man am? Some say you are Elijah. Some say you are this and that. And then he says, listen carefully. I know who thou art. Thou art Christ the son of the living God. When John was caught up in the Isle of Patmos. Revelation chapter 1. He was caught up in the Isle of Patmos. And... He had a revelation when he saw the same Jesus who walked with him. John was surprised because the person he now saw glorified was not the same person who walked upon the earth. John was perplexed. What is this? The Jesus that he saw glorified who asked him to write was very different from the one who was a carpenter's son that walked upon the earth. There is a revelation of Jesus that you must have. That translates to your exploits and even your authority in this kingdom. Can I be honest with you? Most believers are focusing on techniques and principles without encounters. That is why our Christian experience keeps getting frustrating. What are the secrets of healing? And they say, okay, when you come before the sick, step one, rebuke the sickness. Nothing wrong with that. Step two, rebuke the devil. Step three, release the anointing. You will do everything and find out that nothing works. Because principles are powered by encounters. Principles do not just power themselves. Until you have a revelation of the builder, Jesus Christ. Many believers do not know Jesus. But they stand in positions and assume to do the things that only those who know Jesus can do. The sons of Sceva, they understood these principles. And they said, Jesus, I know. The demons replied them. Paul, I know. But he said, who are you? Can I be sincere with you believers? Please hear me. There are many dimensions of exploits in the spirit you will never rise to. Until it comes by the revelation of Jesus. Not just revelation. There is a revelation of many principles. But you must have a genuine revelation of Jesus. It is possible to have a revelation of power without the revelation of Jesus. It is possible to have a revelation of prosperity, genuine prosperity, without the revelation of Jesus. But can I tell you, what gives value to every other revelation is your encounter with the person Jesus. Imagine you coming to describe my house. You can describe the living room. You describe how my fridge looks. You describe how my cars look. And you are not lying. But you do not even know me. Or you just know I'm the owner of the house. And you are not interested in a relationship. Yet you want to eat every day in my house. Yet you want to use my authority. You carry my checkbook around. You stand in front of the bank and say, Look, if you harass me, I will sign a check of one billion. And the owner of it is watching you. Just because you know I'm the owner does not mean you know me. There is a desperate cry for encounters. Let me tell you this. I've studied a bit about the church in Nigeria. And you see, 
Many of our fathers, they did not have the privilege to be educated. But these men took time to know God. They would speak from a position of authority. And they won't go back and pray later and say, God, I hope I won't be put to shame. They had a level of persuasion and confidence. The church was built on the depth of revelation of Jesus as the chosen one and the anointed the bible says there is no other name under heaven given unto men today therapies are replacing salvation there are people who don't need any therapy they need an encounter with jesus no amount i'm not saying there is wrong no amount of therapy will impart eternal life there are people who will undergo deliverance time and again but the real problem is not the presence of the demons the real problem is they have not been open to understand jesus the messiah when the disciples had that understanding it changed their understanding and the bible says these are they that turn the world upside down please look up the greatest experience in my life as a believer it's not my encounters with the gifts of the spirit it's not even all these wonderful things as important as they are that god has done in and through my life my greatest encounters you will hear me talk about them is the revelation of jesus to me this is where my confidence to heal the sick comes from there is a limit to which theory can teach you there is a limit to which principles there are certain things that are engrafted in your spirit you can teach a woman about pregnancy but when a woman gets pregnant even if she never went to pregnancy school there is an experience she has if you cannot give it a technical description you will say madam you know how it felt the things we have seen the things we have heard the things that our hands have handled the revelation of jesus christ and then listen carefully when you encounter jesus the entirety of your journey in the faith life will depend on revelation and obedience please say revelation everybody shout it say revelation and obedience one more time say revelation and obedience the moment you encounter the god of the bible i don't care what level spiritually you are the rules are the same if you don't have access to revelation and you don't have access to a heart that obeys forget about levels in the realm of the spirit no matter where you there is no realm you will rise to where you will outgrow the need for revelation and the need for obedience upon this rock the rock of revelation and obedience for a higher level in the spirit revelation and obedience for exploits in the kingdom revelation and obedience that means if you are limited in a realm the next thing you need is light then when you find that light your next assignment is to obtain grace to work in keeping with the principles that activate the power behind that light listen there are seven levels of authority in the spirit i don't have time to teach on this but there are seven levels when you see believers rise in authority there are seven levels of authority that the bible reveals according to revelation chapter 5 it says i wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scrolls thereof are we together and an elder tapped me and he said weep not for the lion of the tribe of judah the root of jesse of david has prevailed then he says i saw one who was standing around the throne having seven eyes and seven horns notice for every eye there is a horn connected to it the idea stands for revelation dimensions of revelation there are i wish i had time i would have shown you the seven levels of revelation and the basis for their coming into the believer's life there is a dimension of authority that is connected to the eyes that comes through your encounter with jesus that comes through your encounter with the word that comes through your encounter with the spirit of prayer that comes through your encounter with character that comes through your encounter with sacrifice the highest the seventh eye that releases the final authority in the believer's life comes through sacrifice jesus as much as he was powerful jesus never he raised the dead but he never gave anybody eternal life until he died he went through sacrifice 
to get that last level of authority. There is no mention of Jesus Christ giving anybody eternal life before his death. But he raised the dead. He healed the sick. Authority are in levels. There are seven of them as revealed. We worship him because he has perfect authority. And that comes with the, all the dimensions. Why, what will you be doing with seven eyes? I know who thou art. Thou art Christ. The chosen one and the anointed one. When you meet the God of the Bible, when you encounter Jesus who is the son of the living God, you have already gotten a sure foundation for your Christian experience. But the dynamics of your work from that time on will become your pursuit for light and your obtaining grace to obey. Your pursuit for light. Show me a man. Bring an unbeliever right now. And get that person saved genuinely. And then introduce him to this system of the kingdom. The pursuit for light. Obtaining grace to obey. The pursuit for light. Meet that man after five years. You see that? You will never find the same man. Pursuit for light. But the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And you see, listen. Jesus said, I will build my church. Oh dear, I wish I had time. The pursuit for light is not a gift. The same way authority is not a gift. Are we together now? Mm -mm. It's the resultant effect. Your dominion is a product of the level and the access of light that you have. We can all be Christians. Listen, please look up. We can all be Christians. Even called to be in ministry. The difference between any two believers, I tell you, is not just the election of grace alone. It is the access to high level spiritual illumination that they have contended for through the ministry of hunger and alignment. And the grace they have obtained to work in keeping with that grace. Because the foolish man who built on sand also had, but did not obtain the grace to obey. In the parable of the ten virgins, you notice that what made them virgins was the presence of the lamp. What made some foolish is that they did not carry extra oil. All of them were virgins. Are we together now? Apostle, I desire to step into a dimension in the spirit. Is it possible for me? Remember how he built the church. So you don't sit down and say, Lord, I desire to enter this dimension. No, there is a light for every dimension of authority you are looking for. Find the eyes first that connect to that horn. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? Don't look for the seven horns until you find the seven eyes that control the horns. There is an eye for every horn that represents authority. You want to rise financially. There is a body of revelation allocated until you find it. And then obtain grace to walk in obedience. Revelation. Obedience. This is the rock upon which the church was built. I want a higher level of the anointing. What you are looking for should not just be an impartation. What is the body of spiritual revelation? Look at this in the life of Jesus. What was the commendation of the father about Jesus? It was his obedience. He was obedient even unto death. This is what creates people's stature in the spirit it's not superstition and religiosity the depth of your pursuit for light and the determination to work in keeping with the principles that activate the power behind that light let me show you how god taught me this many years ago i had a vision and in my vision i saw a giant door and that door was made up of smaller doors listen carefully and the door was opening and closing. Opening. And as soon as the door opens, light will shoot out of it. And I noticed that on all the smaller doors, you know how a post office box is. So there is that compartment, then there are the smaller doors. I noticed light was opening and closing. And upon every light, there was a scripture that was written. And the Holy Spirit now taught me that every time you catch a revelation that light is the authority component that empowers you to defend that revelation that means anytime you are claiming you have caught light we will verify it by the authority component for every eyes there was a horn 
So if you tell me I have five eyes, but we are seeing one horn, four is not genuine in your life. You have not caught that dimension. That means I can raise the dead. I can heal the sick. Congratulations. What is the basis of your revelation? This is also how to defend genuine power and power that is not genuine. Because power that is not genuine is a product of superstition. But power that is authentic is a byproduct of light. You can detect error in a moment by searching for the revelation component that empowers that individual. If I'm walking in a level of spiritual authority and I cannot defend that level by the requisite level of revelation, something is wrong with that formation because the church was built upon the formation of hearing and obeying access to light hopefully by evening we'll have the time to discuss because you see this issue of hearing there are two dimensions to the word of god that the believer must obtain there is the written word of god that you must have access to are we together now but there are times you must master the art of hearing because your excelling in this scripture will come as a result of the the excellency of your hearing if abraham had god to start the journey to kill isaac and he did not hear god to stop he would have killed isaac and misrepresented god so it's not just the hearing to say start you must also hear when god says stop God can tell you, go to Ibadan for five years. And for 15 years, you'll be failing in Ibadan. And say, I know what God told me. God said, start. But do you have the hearing of when he says stop? This is where many believers become cheated. Because the dynamics of navigating seasons through the word of God, both spoken and written, they do not have it. God can tell you to lift your hand yesterday. But what is he saying now? You can lift your hand forever when the validity period of that instruction has come to an end long ago. There are many people walking in the old speakings of God and blaming him for the result they are not getting. Simply because they do not know that the structure of the kingdom is built upon, yes, the word of God, but not just the written word alone. You must have the ability to hear. He says, and your ears shall hear a voice saying, this is the way. Walk therein and you will find rest for your soul. I was in Zaria for many years. And from 2018, the word of the Lord began to come. To move to Abuja. I argued with God's word for three years. my human nature god i don't want problem what will i move to abuja to do move me somewhere else but not i'm not ready for the i don't think i want to go to abuja and yet the word kept coming you see when god speaks once it's your responsibility to hear twice he will not speak twice he will speak once and the word remains there because the word must return to him with a message whether you obeyed or not and when god spoke to me in blind obedience now you will see what god is doing today and you will say wow this is luck it's not luck it is the power of the leadings of the spirit he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit said listen in the days that are coming the ability to understand the word of god and the construct of the church will mean the difference between life and death for many people this is not just an issue of going forward or backward Hallelujah. Thou art Peter. And you knew me by revelation. And you honored the revelation you had by speaking it out. This is the structure I am going to build the church in. That means the beginning of any journey and any realm for you is your pursuit for light. My question is, how was it revealed to Peter that it was not revealed to the rest? Because the Bible says the same Lord is rich unto all. So what was the basis of Peter's revelation? Receive with meekness the engrafted word. There was something about the heart condition of the rest. Don't think it was just an election unique to Peter. No. The same way the word of God can rest upon everyone. And some will receive it. And have the revelation. And rise to a superior level. And others will sit down and say God is not fair. I can tell you. The same Lord is rich unto all. 
it is that most people do not know how to engage the word of god through hunger and pursuit that you love his law even more than your necessary food my challenge for you this morning in addition to all you have received listen ladies and gentlemen is that number one you must get to a point where you desire a genuine encounter with jesus christ talking about the god that a man of god knows is wonderful but you are my god until he becomes your god you cannot serve your generation you are my god you will not stand before Pharaoh and tell him the God of Apostles sent me to you. You are my God. You are my God. There are things today I believed yesterday. I do not believe them again. Because when I met Jesus, he edited my understanding. There are things I do not believe yesterday, but I believe today because I met Jesus. There are things I believed yesterday, I still believe today because I met Jesus. There are things I didn't believe yesterday, I will not believe them forever because I met Jesus. What is the basis of your conviction? There is blind bold face in the body of Christ that is not backed up by conviction. I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. We had the joy and the, the pleasure of being at um, Pastor Yemi David's building, magnificent structure. You see what God has done there, you will know that this one is more than money and architecture. You are truly on your own if you do, don't hear God for that kind of project. There are many daring things. Let me tell you the truth. When God talks to you, my brothers and my sisters, He will talk to you like He's talking to Himself. He will say, my sister, go and feed 10,000 people. There is a prophet among those children. Make sure you feed them every day. As at the time God is talking to you, you will not even have a bank account. And you will never talk about bank account. That's how God talks. He talks to men like He's talking to Himself. Because you were created. That One of the ways you know is God talking to you is that what He said must make you afraid. You will, you will, know, you will need a grace from Him to believe what He has said. When what He tells you sounds believable, you had a demon. When God speaks to you, it will take his faith to make you believe it. Abraham, I will make you a father of nations. I will bless them that bless you. What kind of mockery is that? 25 years of barrenness and you are not speaking to me about a son. You are speaking to me about giving me the earth as an estate. That's God for you. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, Amen. You are this King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, Amen. Listen. Many years ago, God would give me an instruction to organize crusades. You know what it means to go to an area to organize crusades in partnership with PFN as a young minister. And I'm saying, God, don't do this to me. What kind of embarrassment is this? Where will the money come from? A crusade is not a conference. Conference, you can borrow venue. Hallelujah. There are many instructions that God will give you he will speak to you based on the confidence of his ability that you know and his person that you know if pastor shola right now tells you come and collect a car tomorrow you will call your family members and start rejoicing you will not say let me wait in case he's lying because you have weighed him and based on your knowledge you believe that he's able to cheaply do that that means many of our doubts is not the issue of demons is is that your doubt is a symptom of lack of encounters there is something you are yet to verify about God that makes you not to believe him. Because let me tell you the truth. Faith is a product of revelation. Not just reading your Bible. There is something I. The assignment of the spirit of revelation is to make you see what God is saying. 
I had never entered a plane. I sat down one night in front of a soccer way outside and I saw a plane moving and the Lord spoke to me and said one day you will move in this plane across the globe preaching the gospel. Many people will be in that plane for various reasons. Before when internet just started in its infancy the Lord spoke to me and said your teachings will be a major tool for revival. It didn't make sense at that time. He said put it on the internet and my angel will give it wings and it will go to the nations when you see the other side of obedience it looks like luck but i am telling you it is not luck it is the confidence that comes from encounters hallelujah i have been to many mortuaries i have been closed and left with dead bodies many times you think I'm stupid? My father is alive and my mother is alive. What will I be doing in a mortuary locked? Where you lock the door? What if it does not open again? When you hear stories, don't just think people are lucky. Power and all these things are derived. Everything in the kingdom is derived from revelation. Including your salvation. That means when you ignore revelation, you have ignored the potential for growth the potential for heights the potential for levels what is the difference between you and baba deboe it's not just physical age they have walked with god he said an enoch walked with god these people have walked with god to a point where you can come with your lamentations crying and saying sir tomorrow they are driving me out of the house and they can even be eating and say god will show you mercy and number one you don't even understand what they are saying because it will take a level of light to dissect the confidence from which that statement came from. And because it is an eye, there is a horn that backs it too. God will show you mercy. And immediately at the instance of that word, somebody in your territory will lose sleep until he finds you. Now you try it, it will not happen. Because you are holding a horn that does not have a revelation that supports it. This was the mistake of the sons of Sceva. Please understand my message this afternoon. I'm making it simple for you to understand. What was wrong with the sons of Skiva? There was action. There was zeal. But no revelation that activated the authority. And the demon said no. When Jesus said I will build my church. We had what he said. Jesus I know. 12 years in the temple. Activated by the spirit. There was authority that supported his revelation. Paul I know. 18 years in the wilderness of Arabia. Learning and growing building capacity going up by revelation you where do you stand there are many people organizing healing conferences without encounters you can put banners and say in the name of jesus jesus the same yesterday today and forever that is publicity not encounters now the sick people come and now you in your mind the message of apostle you listen to or any other message step one stand this way rebuke the, that is that is stories you are going to make a mess of yourself in a way that you will be a warning to other believers let me tell you where it starts from an encounter with jesus i listened to one of tl osborne's message and this man cried to know him what was paul's greatest prayer paul did not say that i may give that you may give me he said that i may know him he understood the value of encounters the average believers prayer right now is give me paul said that i may know you i know that when i have revelation i've had the substance of anything i'm looking for let me therefore tell you how god lifts men god does not lift men by giving them physical things when you say god give me a new dimension he will tell you that dimension you see is authority governed but for you to have access to it find the eye one of the seven eyes that connects to the seven horns those who know this bar they don't waste their time wishing things they use light to navigate their ways through realms of power and realms of grace you want to walk in superior levels of the anointing there are revelations that govern that outcome you want to walk in favor there are revelations that govern that outcome. What is the difference between Aliko Dangote or Tedola and any other businessman? It's not the will of God. 
No, it's the will of God for everyone to prosper, including the person suffering. He said the increase of the earth is for all. So it's a foolish question to ask whether it's the will of God for that person to prosper. The difference is your access to light. And the light shineth in darkness. The difference between any two, three men of God is not just the will of God. It's not just the predeterminate counsel. Even though the birth of Jesus was prophesied, his pursuit for knowledge was not exempted. He still pursued knowledge from age 12. The Bible never tells us that Jesus had friends and classmates. He was alone in the temple talking with the doctors. The same people he would die to save. Yet he did not violate that pattern. Revelation. The Holy Ghost never came until after 30 years. Is God that determined about revelation? Because you see brothers and sisters. If God does not increase the size of the vessel. Pouring oil is a waste. There are many people who want new anointing. New impartation. New activations. And you will receive that. We are here for that. But let me tell you, expanding your spiritual capacity is the secret. There are many realms that we entered in God. We didn't even know we had arrived here. We just kept blindly. You know how someone is running a race and you are not even conscious of the finish line. You are just running and they will tell you, you have passed. Hold on. And you find out that you have passed it. May your hunger drive you where, listen, may your hunger drive you to a point where you stop faking this thing. There, there are many faking of power, faking of revelation, copying things online, copying things around with no experience that validates it. I am a man under authority. I say unto one, go and he goeth. Come and he cometh. Oh, I've seen this. And you run and meet somebody and the person tells you his grandfather was a wizard. His father was a wizard. Even him, you will tell you was initiated. And you say, in Jesus' name, I release a word and I cast everyone away. You will be surprised that instantly you can have headache, you cannot explain. After two weeks, you can't wake up again. And you are saying, Lord, but I saw it in the Bible that I've been seated with Christ and so on and so forth. It is true. Paul got it right. But you must understand the dynamics. Having their understanding darkened. Ephesians 4.18 Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Please hear me. The strength of the gates of hell is ignorance and disobedience. The church is built upon these tripartite mysteries. One, the revelation of Jesus as the sent one and as the anointed. Number two, that advancement in the kingdom at any level is a component of high level spiritual illumination that comes through hearing and seeing and then obtaining the grace to do. It says, now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. We will continue to admire people and even get angry. We will continue to celebrate people as though we were relegated by God simply because those who have been built to be formidable as individuals and as corporate entities are people who have understood the power and the value of light and the grace to obey. Please do not miss what I told you. I handed to you a secret for many of you that it will take a long time. By the privilege of God's grace and without any sounding arrogant, I know what I am saying. I am not telling you cunningly devised fables. If there is a dimension that God wants me to get to, I don't sit down and wish it. No. I know that if I'm to rise to that dimension, go back to the structure of how the church was built. Upon this rock. What is the rock? You have satisfied that one of knowing Jesus. Now the dynamics of rising and ascendance in the spirit is a product, listen carefully, of your access to light. And here's what the Bible says, through desire, a man. Some of you have been sitting here for morning, preacher after preacher. You look foolish even to yourself because some of you are already men of God. And people will look at you and say, what is all this one? Why will a man of God travel down and come and sit down? Let me tell you, it's the pursuit of light. Light. Because it is according to the light component that we have. Just wishing anointings and carrying a seed in an envelope and kneeling down. And you are wasting oil. You've been wasting it for many years. Because the vessel that is covered upon, you have a teaspoon and you are pouring one bucket of oil. 
God will stop administering that kind of wastage. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light my life like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Many years ago, I was in a Renhard Bunker Crusade. That's when I would have a revelation of the miraculous. I was a man of God already by God's grace, seeing some level of results. But there was a crowd, probably tens of thousands of people. And I smuggled my way through that crowd and I stood. I was focused on the man. What he was preaching was very simple. And as soon as he was done preaching, he was going to take water, Pastor. And my eyes opened. I went there with hunger. I didn't go there with pride. I am a man of God. Because when you listen to Renard Bonke and you don't have hunger, if it's what you want to hear, English, you are going to be frustrated. Because you will be talking and read the scripture, but you learn to, revelation helps you to see behind the layers. And he was going to take water when my eyes opened and I saw, you've heard my story. I saw the eagle that was soaring around and the Spirit of God took me to Genesis chapter 1 from verse 2 and 3. And the Spirit of God hovered around the face of the waters. It came to me by revelation. You see. So if I begin to speak and things happen, I'm telling you sincerely and it's not pride. Forgive me. At this level, I'm not trying to believe God again. No. I would be lying if I tell you I am. No. No. The only thing that governs me now is the limitation of my honor to his voice. Not lack of results happening. No. You see, there is a level you get to bar where because of your ascendance in the spirit, even if you say what God did not tell you, he will do it to honor that level. Then he will punish you later quietly or rebuke you. This is true. That means if I get up now and say somebody is running out by the anointing, the person will run out because God has invested his name and his honor too much. He would defend it by any means. It's when I go back, he will say, son, this was not consistent with my will. So at this point, you are not looking for results. You are looking for accuracy of the will of God. There is a level where you are looking for results. You are trying to look for results. But there is a level where your concern is accuracy. That that which was in the bowels of the spirit is delivered to precision without the interruption of flesh. Man of God, please hear me. Precious people of God. This revival that we keep talking about, I'll talk a bit about it in the evening before the miracle service. I don't claim to know everything about God. But I can tell you this one thing. If you do not pay the price to know God, you will never be relevant to your generation. I don't care whether you are going to be in ministry, whether you are going to be in business. The price is to know the builder, the Christ. Peter said, I know who thou art. Thou art the Christ. And then understand this formula. The, the primary assignment of prayer was not to express ignorance. The assignment of prayer is to build capacity in the spirit. Most of our prayer life is full of ignorant discussions. Discussions that are derived as a result of the inaccurate understanding of the ways and the systems of God. Lord lift me. Lord lift me. It's a sincere prayer but it's not a wise prayer. Lifting in the spirit is a, a product of revelation and the increasing and the obedience that supports it. So you can be there saying, Lord, lift me. My life can't be like this. Because he's loving and merciful, he will still come to you. But he will still refer you back to his pattern. Therefore, the more I submit myself to prayer, to expand my organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit, the more I submit myself to the learning of scripture, the Bible says in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42, it says, and they 
um, they continued steadfastly in number one the apostles doctrine number two fellowship number three the breaking of bread number four prayer that's how the church became powerful they continued steadfastly Acts chapter 6 and verse 4 they said but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word you want to rise and do much for God in Abel Kuta? Just waiting for a man of God to come and impart grace upon you may help. But let me tell you, there is a man of God here. The secret to your next level is to stop running around and shut down to say, Lord, reveal yourself to me. I'm tired of talking about a God I do not understand. I'm tired of borrowing messages online and moving around and saying it. You will talk like a preacher but not see what the person saw because the person was talking from a standpoint of revelation. Lord, I, I want to settle down and know you. And you invest time. Invest time in prayer. Invest time in fasting. And stay with the word. Open my eyes, oh God. And while people are celebrating you and say, Man of God, you are doing great. You know, people send me text messages all the time and say, Apostle, look what God is doing through you. And I say, Lord, may these things never distract me. I lock myself and pray like I've never started. I lock myself and fast like I've never started. I study the word of God like somebody who does not have any iota of revelation. Because sincerely, I will tell you, the more I know him, the more I want to know him, Jesus, more of you. That's the character of one who will last. The more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. This one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind. For someone, God brought you for this meeting to tell you, you have been celebrating success too early. Throw this petty prophesying here and there. And one word of knowledge, one revelation, and someone is... There are heights and there are levels, my brother. There are levels of authority in the spirit over territories and nations. He brought the guy with five talents, well done, good and faithful servant. I have made you Lord captain over territories not over things when you are still lord over things you are not going anywhere when god makes you captain over destinies you are overseeing god's program not items jesus more of you listen we'll find somewhere to pray i want you to listen carefully as we wrap up i want more of you don't worry worship team you just listen to me i want more of you jesus the more i know you the more i want to know you jesus more of you i wish i had time to teach you the mystery of these seven eyes I will teach you the eyes represent the various dimensions and levels of revelation. There is one of those eyes that only comes through humility. There is a level of authority in the spirit that if you are not genuinely humble, I don't mean as faking humility as a revelation. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. It's a ram. It has nothing to do with personality. There are things that when we see, it swallows up the little that we know. And we are broken immediately. So on one hand, while people clap and say, Well done, man of God, you are doing this, healing the sick, raising the dead, doing this. Compared to that height that you are attaining. Until God grants us the grace to begin to structure the spiritual climate over nations. Where you will stand as a single man and speak revival over nations. This is what some of our fathers did. They stood over territories. Men like John Knox. Men like E.M. Bounds. Men like Charles G. Finney. They stood over nations. Not in a radio station. And they literally programmed the climate of revival. These were not men who carried things. These were men who knew God. The Bible lists them in Hebrews 11. 
and simply calls them elders. An elder is not one who has stayed long. That's a cultural elder or a, a biological elder. An elder in the spirit is one who has mastered the art of walking with God. How I love to stand for you. How I love to worship you. And even though it hurts me for every step I take. And even though it pains me for every move I make. But I love you. I can never ever do without you. I love you. I can never ever do without you. I love you. I can never ever do without you. Listen. There are realms in the spirit, my brothers and my sisters. They are not realms for preachers. These are realms beyond miracles. The miraculous is a dimension in the spirit. I tell you sincerely, the miraculous is not an achievement in the spirit. If you bring the credentials of being a miracle worker in the spirit, there is a place you will sit down in. That's not what brings authority in the spirit. The knowledge of God, your depth of the knowledge of God, that I may know him. Who was speaking? The miracle worker. Who was speaking? The prophet. Paul would look at people and open and close the gates of territory. And his, his need that I may know him. This has been my desire to know him. Not that I may get conferences. Not that I may be a celebrity. Thank God for all of these things. God is using this conference to re-edit the passion of the next generation. Hear me, I'm saying it prophetically. God is using these conferences because there are many zealous men and women, including the younger generation. They are passionate, but many of them are learning all kinds of things. Respectfully speaking, there is already a corruption of the passion from start. So what they bring as the credentials for acceptance is just revelation, the prophetic, rhema, and these things are wonderful. I want to know you. I want to see your face. I want to know you, Lord. I want to touch you. I want to hear your voice. I want to know you, Lord. Listen. Authority in the Spirit is not measured by how you stand. It's measured by how you fall. The elders in the Spirit validated their eldership by removing their golden crowns. And they fell before Him that sits upon the throne. I want to know you. Not know it. I want to see your face. I want to know you, Lord. Just soaking in this atmosphere for a few minutes. I want to touch you. I want to hear your voice. I want to know you, Lord. I want to know you, Lord. I want to know you, Lord. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, you are the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, take your place, take your place, take your place, take your place. Take your place.
Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Seeing then that ye are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. It says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us. And to run with perseverance the race that is set before us. For as long as you remain a preacher, there are realms you will never step in. For as long as you are a businessman, you must become one who is broken beyond ministry. Past the gates of ministry. Past the gates of mundane pursuit for power and fame. To that realm where only lovers, genuine people who seek God for who he is. Prune our hearts, prune our motive. The psalmist was called a man after God's heart. Not a man who had substance. A man after God's heart. A man after God's heart. Just five minutes or ten minutes and we're done. I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do. I need you more and more. Lord, I'm chasing after you No matter what I have to do I need you more and more I'm chasing after you No matter what I have to do I need you more and more Listen, I can tell you this, my precious people, 90% of the realms and the dimensions I entered in the spirit was not entered consciously. I pursued Him. I pursued light. And I pursued the grace for obedience. And it started transiting me through realms of power, realms of grace, realms of authority authority over things authority over people authority over programs you can be given authority over things he gave unto one five talent things the second level was authority over people there is authority over god's program when god gives you authority over nations it is people that make nations but when God now trusts you, that means I am giving you my program over Abel Kuta. The next five years in Abel Kuta, I am raising 19 prophets. And you are the one I am putting in charge of that program. Now, that is real authority. Not just praying for the sick and this. Thank God for those. You become a friend of God. Shall I hide this from Abraham? Seeing that you will be a great man. As much as God rejected Saul... He could not do anything about Saul's situation nor David's situation because the middle man was still negotiating. That is a friend of God. Samuel was more than a prophet, ladies and gentlemen. Samuel was a spiritual system that hosted the program of God. He never became a king, but he could dethrone and enthrone kings. Won't God just bypass him and go to David? God had to come and plead with him and say, Listen, I have rejected Saul as king. Don't waste the time of this man. Stand up and go. That means when God comes to Abel Kuta, he does not just move. There are people he looks for and says, listen, this is what is about to happen. This is the heritage that many of our founding fathers had. They prophesied today in their days. Seated in a position. They wrote sometimes with lay man's language or oral communication. They printed the scripts of the move of God that will happen decades afterwards with precision and accuracy that was beyond the realm of the prophetic they were initiated into a realm of knowledge by reason of their work with God some of them were in such level of consecrations you could count the number of times they came out of certain regions they lived a life of fasting and prayer and consecration they could look at you and write the scripts of your life and say when you get to age 40 be careful i've seen what will happen this is more than prophecy they were they, they worked with god and got certain blueprints when jesus looked at nathaniel and said an israelite indeed in whom there is no guile for someone who just finished insulting jesus 
and Jesus' comment is that the man is innocent. We need to redefine the things that become the parameters for our celebrating success in the ministry. Thank God for the gift of the Spirit. Thank God for accuracy in terms of oratory and communication of the word. But let me tell you, those who shook the world were people who did not even have the comeliness to be desired. Read your Bible. Time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. There are few men in the Bible whose exploits was based on certain kinds of physical things. Saul was a man of stature and a great man, very comely and to be desired. But when God was rejecting him, he did not consider that stature. There are weightier things in the spirit that God considers. I've had the privilege in recent time to travel across Africa, staring up the fire of revival as he's granted me grace. And I can tell you, I see that formation brewing again. Abel Kuta, God has come to you again. And from Abel Kuta to the body of Christ, hear me. For some of you, you lost the fervency you received last year through carelessness. You are more focused in being an emoji and your small prayer group and competing with one another to see that, look, I think our prayer group has now expanded. All that nonsense is the recipe for aborting the move of God. Above and beyond those mundane pursuits, it must be a sincere passion to press towards the things of God. You have come here tonight to receive and you will receive. You have come here to receive miracles and impartations. But my charge to you is to understand that this rock we are talking about is not just Jesus alone. The revelation of Jesus as the Christ number one but the understanding that our ascendance in this kingdom is light dependent. No amount of sympathy and emotions will corrupt this formula. Not even Jesus. Not even Jesus himself was exempted from this. You are where you are because of the limitation of your hunger for greater light. Genuine light. That was the true light. There are false lights. Lights that when you get it, you expect the authority component and it does not come. It is false light. But it says that was the true light that lighted upon every man. I was talking with one of the fathers of faith recently by the privilege of God's grace. And when he was sharing with me certain things, I just stood and I felt, I literally felt like a child. I said, it is arrogant and truly foolish for us to actually believe that these fathers were just lucky to be where they are most of the wisdom of the fathers is not in the pulpit it's reserved in their bowels waiting for hunger and honor to draw it out let me give you a real secret from accessing from a father you will not find it in the sermons you will find it through hunger and honor it will take hunger to pull it out the blessing was hiding in isaac for a long time and he kept quiet watching esau and jacob just believing that people will spoon feed you with the weightier, deeper matters of the spirit is a joke. It will take your hunger to love him more than ministry, to love him more than titles, and to recognize the investment of God's spirit across the body. You see that? We are equal in Christ, but let me tell you an uncomfortable truth. We are equal in Christ because the same Lord is rich unto all. But based on our sacrifices of alignment and the investment of the Spirit upon us as a response, it has separated us into different strata of spiritual possibilities. And the earlier we come to terms with that, the better for us. It's not an insult, it is the truth. I know my level in the Spirit. I know where God has brought me. I know where God has taken the fathers. I will minister only to the degree of the level that God has given while trusting Him to access light and wisdom from those who have it to be able to help expand my spiritual horizon. I will never fall into the temptation of pride to administer a jurisdiction that is higher than my level of grace. The things that are written are four times. Many have taught that part in the spirit and they became casualties because of it. An example was Saul. Saul, even though he was king, did not understand the power of jurisdiction. And he went to offer sacrifices, not waiting for Samuel. He did it out of compassion, but he still was not spared. He said, Saul, you have done foolishly. Samuel spoke to him. He said, you would have done this. You would have allowed me to come and God would have preserved your throne forever. But this day, your kingdom is taken away from you. The second man who acted arrogant like that was the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar. Remember, Mene Mene Tekel Ufesen. 
Oh king, you have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting. Let me tell you the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, there are levels in the spirit. And these levels are not seen by falling down and rising up. These levels are seen by the degree to which God trusts you with things, with people, and with his program. There are people who have left the level of things. And for every dimension you ascend, you control what is below it too. Let me give you an instance. If Baba Adeboye comes right now, we're wrapping up. If Baba Adeboye comes right now, even if he comes without anything, because of the level of authority he has in the spirit, within 24 hours, a car will come, money will come. He does not have to tell people, I am around. There is a system that noises people are brought based on your authority. Learn this. When Jesus was born, there was a star that arose and the Magi, those who understood astrology, they saw it. They said, this is more than geography. Something is happening in the earth. There are people that step into territories and it is signified both within the realm of the spirit because of the authority that God has placed upon them. You can claim it, but when you have it, it shows authority over things. Because if you are not faithful in unrighteous mammon, who shall commit to you the true riches? That means true riches is not things. When God trusts you with things, that is the least level. Unfortunately, that is the level of our pride in the church. I have a car, I have a church, I have a structure. Things. The next level is where God commits to you nations. Another word, people. There are people who are greater. It's an insult. Things? No. They are involved overseeing the spiritual growth of people, nations. The highest authority I know of is when God commits his program to you. A portion of his program. Go and read the Bible. When God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he had to branch to Abraham. This was more than things. This was more than people. Abraham already had things and people. But he said, Abraham, this is my program. What do you think? Abraham said, God, wait. Don't move yet. I have an interest in that place. And your program too will suffer. Do you see how these men work with God? They would talk with God and say, God, don't do this. Moses would negotiate with God and say, if we will not go down, how, do, how shall they know we are people who are separated? And the Bible will say, God repented. Is it not in your Bible? That means when the devil is programming a climate of darkness upon the earth. And in Abel Kuta, there are people who will be praying but God is waiting for somebody. The person will say, Lord, this is what the devil wants to do. But I stand by the reason of this position and I stop it. Do you think when there was hunger in the land, other people did not pray? You thought other people did not pray? And yet it looked like their prayer was not answered. God was waiting for the discussion between him and Elijah. Could it be? That God put in, in this meeting in the heart of Pastor Shola, Pastor Shagun, all those who have put this together is because God is saying, for the next 10 years I'm beginning to do something in Abel Kuta, but who will go for us? Yes, there are pastors and they are all respected to the degree of God's grace upon their lives. But could it be that in this season, you will be surprised that God can organize a program that has 10,000 people. He will bless everybody, but he's looking for three people. There are three people. God can extend a program by two more days because the last person he's looking for did not come. That's how meticulous God can be. He left and went to Gadara to find one man, delivered that man, and went back. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed now please hear me 
Tonight is a miracle service, but there is something I want to share with you, still connected to this, about the move of God and the apostolic structure for the move of God coming. I've been having a lot of encounters in the last two to three months, and based on the authority of Scripture, the wisdom of the fathers, and even what God is showing us, the body of Christ must be guided to understand the structure and the formation of God's program so that we can maximize what it is many people waited for the move of god without preparation and it came and passed and they lost it he said the sons of issachar they had an understanding of the times and they knew what israel ought to do as a result god made them captain even over their brethren hallelujah so we're going to pray for the sick yes we're going to minister to people activate all the graces that need to structure the body of Christ within this region to be effective. That is part of the apostolic mandate. However, let me tell you, deeper than all of this, I came like John the Baptist, making a clarion call. Abel Kuta, the body of Christ. Don't think God has had enough people. God is still looking for men. There are many preachers. There are many prayer warriors. There are many fasting giants. There are many apostles and prophets but God is still looking for men. You need to find out the kind of man God is looking for. If you can have the time and God grants you the grace, please I want you to search for a teaching that I did in a conference, Pastor Shola's conference, the vessel, the mandate, and the strategy. Please look for that teaching and listen to it. Listen to it with all your heart. Is it alright if we pray? Please rise up on your feet. One of my precious people wrote a song that I want to sing before I speak over our lives. This is what I believe God is doing across the globe. And this is what I believe God is doing even in Abel Kuta. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me. No eye has seen, nor ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ is formed in me. No eye has seen, nor ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me Till Christ be formed in me Till Christ be formed in me Your wisdom revealed through me That your glory rests on me Till your work be formed in me so I submit to your work in me Till Christ be formed in me Listen, more than looking like an apostle If all you do is to look like an apostle You didn't do much If all you do is to look like a prophet You didn't do much If all you do is to look like a businessman You didn't do much The standard is looking unto Jesus until Christ that when people look at you you become the clearest description of the Christ in every way in character in the outworkings of his wisdom the outworkings of his power the effulgence of his glory upon you now you become a living epistle like the Bible says we are going to pray two prayers let it be from the depth of your heart father I'm tired of my current spiritual level Take me to a deeper level. I'm tired of celebrating this level and this realm. Is someone praying? No matter what level and what dimension. Congratulations for where you have found yourself. Congratulations for the prophetic. The word is already beginning to work in your life. Congratulations, you now have a church. Congratulations, you've now been ordained into ministry. But listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. There are higher realms. Job said 
there is a path which no fowl has seen the webs of the lion has not even trodden there i want you to open your mouth and pray from the depth of your heart greater dimensions greater level of trust of your power your grace your wisdom higher levels of authority and dominion in the spirit someone is praying purge my heart oh god purge my motives purge my motivation reorder my perception correct my ideas No matter how long you have held on to age old wrong ideas, lift your voice and pray. Correct my ideas and my perceptions. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. And I saw before the throne a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven eyes and seven horns seven dimensions of revelations that control the seven levels of authority that god has earmarked for the believer there is no man i know on earth who has access all seven the only person that has, has access all seven is jesus christ himself that i know that's why paul said Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, he began to describe dimensions we have not even come close to. Paul himself, he tried and tried to get to that level. But even him, he was limited. But the Bible says, listen very carefully, that there is a body of knowledge that has been preserved for a generation. It says you are a chosen generation and a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. And what makes you peculiar is that you have access to this body of truth the Bible calls marvelous light. Marvelous light. Light above and beyond even the generations past. Not because we are pressing more than them. God has so chosen by his predeterminate counsel to grant us access to the eyes of the spirit. We are going to pray. Lord, the level of revelation and illumination that controls the next phase of my spiritual experience, grant me access to it. Go ahead and pray. Grant me access to it by the Spirit. Please pray. Please pray. Pray for the sake of your church. Pray for the sake of your assignment. Pray for the sake of those who are under you. The level of spiritual illumination. The level of light and wisdom. That controls the various faces of authority. That I must access in order to administer the purposes of God I obtain grace hallelujah hallelujah the three levels that we see that God desires for every man to enter was captured in the temptation of Jesus the devil came and tempted Jesus across three things temptation number one turn this stone to bread the temptation that makes for your personal sufficiency things Lord give me a car give me a house there is a place for that Jesus overcame that temptation not by having them he overcame that temptation by rising above them you don't conquer things just by having it you conquer things by rising above it if you have it and you rise above it it's a better expression of that victory but even if you don't have it and god grants you grace to rise above it you conquer it he said it is written man shall not live by bread alone when you speak to a hungry man he's not thinking of a temple and he's not thinking of this i'm trying to show you these three levels man shall not live by bread alone satan said i understand the next phase he took him to a holy temple a spiritual place because the spirit controls the physical and he said bow down fall down he will put his angels charge over you you see that now that is the second level spirituality 
because when you have high level spirituality you can administer the word of god and minister to people but the side effect is pride pride carelessness complacency but the third temptation was not over things was not over people it was over territories the bible says he took him to an exceeding high mountain is that in your bible and showed him the glories of the world and said all this has been given to me he was giving him the things that he was going to get by dying and resurrecting but the only challenge is if jesus collected it he will have it alone jesus didn't have it alone after all everything was his own the reason why he rejected that temptation was he did not want to rise alone. He had you in mind. So he relinquished what he had and came and went with you in covenant. Hallelujah. There are many good things you need to deny now. Because having them will only keep you alone. And when a corn of wheat abides alone, it dies and does not become anything. It is that process of death that gives you the multiplier factor in your life. For some of you, God is going to trust you with things by meeting your needs in this conference. He's not careless. Your house rent, your whatever it is, tired of finance, a job. But if you get it and just give testimony, praise the Lord. This God is good. Oh, right now I have a job. That is the least level of seeing the grace of God and walking with God. The next level is to ascend spiritually where God can trust you over nations to mentor people with his precepts and to guide their spiritual understanding. Jeremiah 3.15 and I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart that they will feed you with wisdom and with understanding. But the highest level is where God gives you authority and trust over his program. That means there is something I'm doing in Abel Kuta. Man of God, raise me five prophets, ten evangelists, fifteen kingdom financiers. This is my program. And you can say, Lord, count on me. Give me three years. You have mastered the art of things, people. Now you can stay in God's program. The Bible says, and David served his own generation. Father, we thank you for all of the speakers who brought your word from the throne of grace from early this morning even up till now thank you for their lives their sacrifices and the wisdom that has proceeded from their work with you thank you for that which you have taught us right now even by your spirit lord i am praying that beyond the words of a man your spirit will begin to mold within us the character that reflects christ in truth i pray for you in the name of jesus that every level that you are may god himself measure a thousand cubits and take you higher by light that everything that has swallowed your passion for spiritual things your passion for light your passion for illumination either pride complacency carelessness arrival mentality i erode those distractions out of your life in the name of jesus christ and i plant in you a fresh hunger as though you never knew him before in the name of Jesus Christ I also prophesy over your life that the prophecy connected to your life for this generation will not be aborted in the name of Jesus Christ a final word before I return to my seat please make sure you invite everyone I'm lending my voice with pastor and the organizers please invite everyone tonight and let us share fellowship with the Lord the Lord bless you and honor you in Jesus name Hallelujah. I I want to thank Pastor Shola sincerely again for this privilege and this opportunity. I want to thank the fathers of faith here. Um, Pastor Chidume, God bless you and honor you, sir. Our daddy, God bless you, sir. Hallelujah. I also want to celebrate and truly honor every man and every woman of God 
here anytime you see a man of God who loves Jesus and serves him truly they are deserving of your honor it takes a lot to say yes yes means many no's no to many many things hallelujah while standing before we sit I want us to know that when we gather like this it is more than just gathering to honor the presence of a man hallelujah it is important for us to be intentional in our understanding that when the glory of God rests upon his people many things happen within the atmosphere of that glory principally the revelation of Jesus but then in addition to healings miracles by the way where is the lady that had her child come please when you find her I don't know when you find her let her come hallelujah and then I want you to listen very carefully one of the greatest blessings of a prophetic and a miracle service like this as far as I am concerned that's all right if, if she's not if she's not um, within um, hallelujah okay when you find her please give her the allowance to come now please listen every time I have the privilege of ministering to God's people like this more than receiving the miracles my greatest my greatest assignment is to expose God's people to that atmosphere of His glory. Because when the glory comes, there'll be no words to say. Oh, oh, oh. When your glory comes, there'll be no words to say. Oh, oh, oh. Of God is a definition of his weightiness, his entirety, every component that makes him God, his wisdom, his power, his favor. When you expose people to the atmosphere of his glory, they never live the same. Some of them will live with wisdom or heightened wisdom. Some of them will live with favor. Some of them will live with all kinds of miracles. When the rod was placed in an atmosphere of that glory, even though it didn't have root to the earth, it bonded in 24 hours. When the glory comes, there will be no words to say. Oh, oh, oh. When His glory comes, there will be no words to say. From the beginning of this conference, many of you have endured making sacrifices from one speaker after another, one vessel after another. Some of you may have been around for the past six years of the ABM. Some of you a few of the years. Some of you this is your first night. Now let me tell you the possibilities that you receive in an atmosphere of God's glory does not depend on his love alone. Neither does it even depend on his will. It depends on the sincerity of your hunger and your recognition. For God can be in a place and you do not know. Covered by pride maybe. Covered by carelessness maybe. Are we together? covered by all kinds of factors it takes admitting that when God comes in the midst of his people there is always something to see there is always something to get there is always something to receive among the many things that God does to his people is to grant them access to his glory Moses said show me your glory and God did not reject the request that means he desires that his glory be seen we're going to pray for 10 minutes from my time hallelujah it's a miracle service we'll take some time to pray and there is prayer that is for edification there is prayer that is for warfare and supplication there is prayer that is for intercession it has many compartments 
as far as the administration of it is concerned but the prayer we are praying for the next 10 minutes is to enlarge our capacity in the spirit 10 minutes is not all the time you need but with respect to this atmosphere i did tell us in the morning it is a waste to pour anything from heaven upon a vessel that is closed or a vessel that is small these are the two conditions of vessels that make any investment on them a total waste a vessel that is closed no matter how large cannot receive a vessel that is small no matter how willing cannot receive more than its capacity hallelujah so i like you right where you are to begin to pray in the spirit i like you to see your ministry as you are praying stepping into another level I like you to see the mandate God has placed upon your life stepping into another level whether you are at the back whether you are in front it does not matter I like you to see your music ministry being part of the cutting edge tools that God will use in this end time I like you to see the prophetic mandate that is upon your life that perhaps is at its infancy found to flames to dimensions where it can serve the purposes of God across nations someone is praying Please pray just a few minutes in the spirit. I like you to see your bishopric as far as the end time program of God is concerned, being secured and preserved by your passion and determination. Take 
Seeing that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, every sin and every weight, and then to run with perseverance the race that is set before us. In the name of Jesus. 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 Now please listen. Before you sit down, the Lord just opened my eyes to see something. Don't sing. But as I raise the song, please bring all the people out under the anointing. God is doing something very, very mighty. You are glorious, so glorious in your way. You are powerful, so powerful in your way. You are awesome, so awesome in your ways. Just bring them out under the anointing. You are powerful. So powerful in your ways. Oh, that's that our woman. Just a moment. You are powerful. So powerful in your ways. There is a spirit of glory that is resting upon people. Your ministry and your life will not be the same. Not this night. Yahweh, Yahweh, you are glorious, so glorious in your ways. Dear prophet of God, there is a clarion call upon your destiny. Yahweh, Yahweh. You are glorious, Alabada Gata Braska de Balagatos, Cabran de Cabarato, Sadia da Balada Balada. You are mighty, so mighty in your ways. There is an ignition of fire. You'll be seated shortly, but this is what God is doing, and this is the instruction He gave me. Young and old alike, it's an outpouring of the Spirit upon you. You are powerful. So powerful in your ways. You are powerful, powerful. So powerful in your ways. Oil is being poured upon the destinies of men. Not just their heads. The destinies of men. You are powerful. Please bring them out. So powerful in your ways. You are mighty, so mighty in your ways. You can be dangerous, so dangerous in your ways. 
You can be dangerous, so dangerous in your ways. Shall I get it? Oh, 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 oh. I'm hearing the word selected and appointed for a time as this. There are people you have been selected by God. That unction is coming upon you right now. Selected for your families. Selected for your regions. Some you've seen it in dreams. Others in visions. But this is a night. Here in Abel Kuta, that mantle of your destiny is locating you. Bring them out. Selected and appointed for a time as this. Others for a generation. Others the Josephs of the family. Young and old, male or female, the spirit of grace, selected and appointed. There are people, there are mantles upon you. You do not even know God is bringing you out by His Spirit. Rapa kata pasha la barande se beleka tusiata. Sa brande ke bereka tuska di brande ke baliata. Hallelujah. Now please hear me. Hear me. The Lord is ministering to me that there are people here. A spiritual season is coming to an end in your life. And another one is opening up. It's, it's a new level of grace and a new level of fire. For some, you are ministers of the gospel. God brought you here because Abata Shadabata. There is a dimension of grace. Ministers of the gospel. I'm hearing this particularly for preachers. People who are ministers of the gospel. The mantle that has been looking for you. I direct it to you. I direct it to you. Male and female. Access that mantle. In the name of Jesus. Access that mantle by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please listen. When we call people out like this, it is not just for show, just to see people littered on the ground. No. There is something that God is doing. I stretch my hands towards all those in front. In the name of Jesus. The levels in the spirit that you should enter. For the sake of your destiny and your assignment, we command vistas to be open now. By apostolic authority, I decree in the name of Jesus, in the name that is above all names, I call upon he who has the key of David. May that new realm and dimension be open for you. 
in the name of Jesus let it be opened for you let it be opened for you in Jesus name now hear me please please as much as those who can go back to their seats in front I want them to go because I want to make another call please sit down if you can please sit down if you can be very sensitive whether I saw so many people at the back doesn't matter which you know whether you are at the, the, um, the canopy or any other place I want you to be very sensitive I had a brief time of prayer there is another set of people I'm going to ask to come out those if, if they cannot stand up just leave them please don't force them now listen please one of the mantles that God is restoring in this conference I had a vision and it was the vision of the transfiguration and I saw Moses and Elijah there are two types of the prophetic the prophetic ministry that will be activated in this end time Moses was a prophet Elijah was a prophet but the administration of their offices were not the same are we together all of them were mandated to preserve the purposes of God in a generation Elijah preserved from Jezebel and Ahab Moses preserved from Pharaoh and all of them required signs and wonders it was a mantle and a rod that helped them to preserve the purposes of God God is restoring an ancient prophetic heritage please hear me I'm speaking to you by the spirit many grandfathers some of you come from physical paternal families that carry the heritage of the prophetic but because you are dull of seeing and your ears do not hear they just told you a story that your grandfather was part of those who would visit these men at the campground and you have been having visions of these experiences one of the mandates tonight is to stir up particularly this prophetic dimension again we need it not just for show don't be afraid of the prophetic because of the little abuses here there is going to be a stirring a stirring of that prophetic mantle for some of you that mantle has been hovering around whole families and everybody has rejected it everybody has rejected it i pray that you are not the one to reject it tonight Hallelujah.